Welcome once again to our Bible study on the book of Revelation. I'm Pastor John Cole, Senior Pastor of the Christian Pentecostal Church in Staten Island, New York. Last week we began to look at the very first chapters of the book of Revelation. And we see where John is watching one of three visions that he's going to see from God in outlining what's going to happen in the future. But he also sends a message to seven churches that kind of form a circle in the area where the disciple is near, near Patmos, the island of Patmos where he's in prison. But we see last week, last, it speaks about the church of Ephesus, which is a town that Paul has gone through and done great work there. And we see at the time of the writing that the church has done well, but it also has a problem in different areas. And Jesus is using this message, this vision, to not only let them know of their problem, but he's telling them how to correct it. Time has gone by and people get involved and so on, as we're going to see. For the church of Ephesus, for example, they were a working church. They were very powerful when it came to witnessing and something like that. And they have patience, apparently, with the work that they're doing, and that's one thing that you need to know in church. You have to have patience with people. They're growing spiritually, and it takes time for some people. But they also had a false apostle in the church, one of the original seven demons, uh, deacons named Nicola Nicolaes, Nicholas, and he had a group called the Nicolaitans. And basically what their idea of Christianity was, it's okay to sin a little bit. You're not going to be perfect, so don't worry about your sin. And of course, this is not what Jesus preached and not what Paul preached as well. And here he's telling the church, you can't allow this to be something that you agree with. And he wants it corrected. And he, he talks about, I will remove thy candlestick, which we saw in the first chapter in, in the throne room of God. He also tells them that he will over, he'll reward them if they become overcomers, overcoming the problems that are seen by the Lord himself. We also spoke about a second place called Smyrna. Now Smyrna was an interesting place as well. The Bible tells us that it was an ancient church located in a place called Izmir. It was one of the most beautiful cities of all of Asia. And it was the center of the worship of Caesar, the head of the Roman Empire. He also tells them he would give them a crown of life if they're faithful unto death. There's a lot of uh, people being hurt, even killed, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's letting them know through this vision that it's, not, it's all going to be rewarded by God himself. All of the things that they're doing and the punishments that they're going through. It says he will give us a crown of life. And he goes on to say, he that overcometh shall not be hurt in the second death. Now, what's the second death? Well, we know the first death is a physical death. The second death, unfortunately, is a spiritual death where those who have not come to Christ are going to be forever. So it's a kind of a death. Although they're alive, they're dead spiritually. And in punishment, in, in pain, until eternity goes on and on and on and on. An eternal punishment. In this, also in this church, he, he commends the people who are there, the ministry and, and the people that are attending, that they are in a place where tribulation and poverty is all around them. And they have even blasphemous Jewish people that are going around from this, it's called the synagogue of Satan, trying to add to or take away from the, from the Gospels and even the Old Testament laws. And he warns them that if they continue doing that, they're going to be in great tribulation. And then he tells them this, be faithful unto death and receive a crown of life. So unfortunately, when they got this letter, it was telling them that whatever they were going through in regard to problems, they were going to get worse. The next of the seven churches is Pergamos. And listen to what he says to this church. He says, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword and the two edges, speaking about Christ. I know thy works, 
and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name, hast not, and have not denied my faith, even in those days where Antipius was the faithful martyr who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But we have a few, I have a few things against thee, he calls, he speaks, because thou hast there among them the people with the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So thou hast also them that hold to the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. So he's, he's looking at this Nicolaitan thing as if just as in the Old Testament, people were taking the gospel, taking the laws of God, and trying to turn them in their own ways, in their own lusts. And he goes on to say this, Say thou hast them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which again was, you can sin, but only keep it down. You get not a little bit of sin. Now we know a little bit of sin doesn't stay. It gets worse and worse and worse. It's, it becomes a door where Satan can take that little bit of sin and, and bring it into great sin very easily. And we see here, he also tells them that he's going to be working with them to change these things. And he expects them to do their part in this Pergamos church. Mm. Look what he says as far as commendation. Hold this fast to my name in Satan's seat. This is very powerful. Here they're in the middle of all kinds of satanic worship, worship of other gods and who knows what else, fornication, and all this thing going on, Christians being martyred, giving their lives for the gospel, and he's, he's commending them that they're still there. But he also tells them they've got into this doctrine of Balaam. Not everybody, but there's people in the church that want to have one foot in the church and the other foot in sin. There was sacrificing to idols. There was fornication. And then the Nicolaitans again, giving their, their false uh, way of, of being, being a Christian and mixing it with some sin, right? Mm -hmm. And then he tells them this, repent or else I will fight against thee with the sword of my mouth. This is a very powerful statement. He's telling them that he, they're going to be punished if they don't change. Now, a lot of us as Christians think that God is good, and he is, and that God, no matter what we do, God is on our side, and to a point he is. But if we systematically and continually do the wrong thing when we know the word of God tells us the Holy Spirit tells us that is sinful we have to stop we have to change we can't expect God to give us a special uh, anointing that we're not going to be punished for our sins and remember in a church atmosphere you're not only affecting one person yourself but you're affecting other people too thinking that it's okay because you're saying it's okay or you're living that way we're going to continue looking at these churches and we're going to see that each one of them has something that could be commended for and also something that they can be admonished for. And again, we can apply the same rule today to churches. There is no perfect church because we don't have perfect people. Mm -hmm. And again, we have to be very carefully what we believe. And again, it should be tested by the word of God, yes. not by some evangelist, prophet or whatever you want to call them. If God says something is sin, it's sin. It doesn't unsin. So again, be careful who you listen to, especially when you feel in your spirit that something's wrong with what they're saying. Mm. Look in the Word of God and find out if what they're saying is from God or from a Jezebel or a, a false spirit that has come in and has been led in to the church of God. Mm. We'll continue next week, and again, keep reading the Word of God, because that's our template. That, that, that tells us where the lines are, what is right, what is wrong, and even how to change those parts of our life. God bless you. We'll see you next week.